either mixed by volume or mixed by weight. And just because something's mixed at 5 to 1 by volume doesn't mean that it mixes at 5 to 1 by weight because things are different densities. So, never make that assumption. Um, if you're not sure, look on the instructions on the container. It should specify whether or not it's 5 to 1 by volume, 5 to 1, 5 to 1 by weight. Um, typically, when you've got epoxies, when they're talking volumetric measurements, they're trying to sell you their, their metering pump system. Which, which works great for doing small jobs, but when you're trying to mix two kilos at a time, a little squeeze pump is uh, a little bit painful. So that's why I'm going to show you mixing it, just uh, measuring it properly. Like I say, in this case, we'll be measuring by volume. More than likely, when we use the resin for on the car, we'll be measuring it by weight. So this is a really good situation to get curing agent in your eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Get a heavier screwdriver. No, sorry. sorry, am I? Just stand back. Mm -hmm. Fine. Yeah, Isaac. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, we're so strong. <laughs> <laughs> he did open this container that I could not open. <laughs> So, never assume that because you saw epoxy once and you mix it at 5 to 1 by volume, that's the case with all the epoxies. They're all different. So, it's really important to have a technical data sheet um, to, that you're aware of with the materials that you're using. Um, also, you should have material safety data sheets on any products that you're using. So that in the event of emergency, you've got a meaningful re reference. Everybody's not saying, oh shit, what do we do now? They're saying, get one person deals with the person, the next person is getting the MSDS. Because if you need to take them to the hospital, that's the information that they need. It's shaken up. It shouldn't. It shouldn't stratify. Is there Sometimes, well, where... Polyester resins do. Vinyl ester resins definitely do stratify. Stratification is something that happens when materials are stored. If you've got materials with a variety of molecular weights, they will settle to different levels within the column, the liquid column. So if you bought something and you haven't got a clue how long it's been sitting on the shelf, giving you a bit of a swish around canter. Uh, so, I mean, so the MSDH yeah. on all the cups we have are on the shelf. Um, unless you move them up. Because uh, they're on the binder on the thing. So yeah, I think they're all the cups, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 sure, Last thing here. Other thing move in here? Oh, here it is. Yeah. So it's right here in the white binder. So all the MSDH, all the chemicals that we store in the shop. So the next question is, when I'm doing a laminate, how much resin am I going to need? Do I mix up 100 mils? Do I mix that uh, many times during the day? Or do I mix up a kilo? Or what do I start with? What's, what's my indicator? So typically, I will measure the weight of the amount of fiber that I'm going to be applying in that layer for the foreseeable half hour. That's how much resin I'll be making up. You don't want to mix too little, because you're just wasting time going back and forth mixing. By the same token, you don't want to mix too much, 
because if you've got a bunch of resin sitting around, what's going on? We're talking about a chemical reaction, an exothermic chemical reaction. So the more material you have sitting in a puddle, the more heat it's going to generate, the faster it's going to suddenly cure on you. And you'll end up throwing it out and starting again. So there's a balance there as far as how much you need to Does that factor how much is in some cup? Right? Do you also have to factor how much this means? No. But it's negative. The one to one is purely a ballpark. Gives you a ring, gives you a card. Right? Yeah. So we'll make up 300 bucks. You'll notice that it appears as if I'm trying to pour out of this can backwards. Yeah. Um, the reason you do that is because if I pour it this way, it immediately tries to pour. Right? If I turn it this way, I've got a larger air pocket that would the fuller can. Theoretically, I should be able to tip it and pour it nicely. <laughs> They do, but we could also mix it five to one. I think we're just tempting that. There it measured out 300 mils. So a five to one ratio. How much, how much hardware should I be putting? Everybody agree with that? We don't have to integrate it, do we? Interesting you should mention that, because having worked with mixing epoxy for, I don't know, 15 years or so, <laughs> I figured I had it down, right? I figured I knew how to mix epoxy right after that. And so I was doing this uh, project where we were just trying to bring down the actual gel line of our resin system. Where I was comparing it to a different resin system. And really variable results. In the life of me, I couldn't figure out what the variability was. Like what was, like I think I was doing exactly the same thing, or I get different results. And I was, temperature I was keeping constant, starting temperature, temperature materials. You know what the variability was? I'm mixing temperature. So, <laughs> I have a bucket of resin here. 
<coughs> let's pretend it's not 300 mils, but 2,000 mils. What's the best way for me to build my own thermo thermonuclear meltdown? <laughs> Have it all in the same cup. Have it all in the same cup, right? Think about what goes on with a chemical reaction, an exothermic chemical reaction. It generates heat. Well, if I look at this mass of resin and think, where is it going to develop the most heat? Probably in the center. Right? So the more I can spread this out into a thin layer, the more working time I'm going to have, and the less likely I'm going to get into issues while I'm laminating. So the first thing is to dump it straight away into a roller tray. So it's much easier to position your fiber into your mold or on top of another laminate when it's not sticky wet. That's one of the reasons I prefer to do it this way. What the roller? Like that. Okay. Okay. What the, that roller? Oh, okay. fuck. There you go. When you're, when you're getting rollers and you're doing laminating, yeah. get full size paint rollers. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what we're wanting. Twelve inches yeah. or like like those big thick ones. Um, I prefer the narrower ones if you get. You get them the ones. It doesn't hold them tall the box. Yeah, you just get more pressure with them. Okay. Better pressure, and so you're doing ninety percent of your laminating while you're wetting out. Okay. Um, So I, all I've done is I've tagged down one corner, yep. so that gives me a place to work from. Yeah. And you can roll it out nice and flat. Exactly. Wow. thorough when you're laminating because one dry spot can ruin your entire laminate. <laughs> so I I, that's why I wanted to show you five blocks first because the, the way it goes clear is a really good indicator as far as how, how wet out it is. It's not dripping wet. You can see it's got a couple of bands here that haven't gone clear because there's not enough resin in them. Also that edge, exactly. So. We're not building low-grade composites here, we're building high-performance composites. So we don't want to be throwing just buckets of resin into the thing and, my god, it's dry, i got to throw more resin onto it. Um, you use your laminating technique, right? To take this layer of resin, so now I've worked out the majority of air out of that laminate. good to go. I can slap another layer on top of there. Um, if I were to leave this to cure without vacuum bagging it, I'd still end up with a very good laminate. Um, the majority of the air is out of it. And you'll see this when uh, we get to the coarser stuff like the carbon. It's a bit harder to get the air out of. It's hard to tell whether or not it's properly wet out because it's much thicker, it's black, it doesn't go transparent like this. So it's, it's good to practice with the glass and just uh, get a feel for it. So I'll let you, whoever wants to go ahead and put the next layer on, yes. and then get started on the carbon one. Yes, just one. Oh. <laughs> just. Oh, I'm not going to take you on. 
Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking you wanted one. I do want that one. Who wants to start on the carbon <laughs> one here? Sure. <laughs> That was so satisfying to watch. It was insane. I love that.